Jennifer Wilkinson. I'm Vox's film critic, and Ann Dowd is here with us to talk about the film. Thank you for coming. Um, so, Ann, I just wanted to start out by asking you um, what your feeling was coming into this project that you thought you were going to experience by participating in it. I feel so invasive. Right now, if you need space, I understand. Thank you so much for coming. Um, what did I think was going to happen? Yeah, and maybe what did happen um, for you as you were kind of working through what, the emotion of this project? Well, I, I when I first read it, I had two thoughts at once, which was so, uh, which were, uh, how can you turn this down? You can't. I knew that I wanted to do it without question. And the other was, can I live truthfully in this level of grief for the time it would, it would be needed? Because you know, the, the goal is always um, you know, to honor the character, whatever you do. You know? uh, but in this case, it was more because so many suffer uh, this kind of loss. So there was a level of responsibility too to it. As I say, it's for every character, but in this particular, it was beautifully written. It is beautifully written. Um, and where am I going now? <laughs> well, so one thing that always interests me is that um, often artists kind of enter a project with one conception and then they realize they've learned something by the end or they discovered something or something surprised them through the making of it. And I'm wondering if that happened. Oh, I see. Yeah. Sorry. I, I will say we had two and a half days of rehearsal. And in that period, we went through text to make sure we all understood what we were doing and areas that may have seemed just little things that bumped Fran was very, very generous. There weren't many. He just did some adjustments. The most significant thing that happened in that two and a half day period is that we came to trust one another and a level of intimacy and care was immediately present. Actors are comfortable with intimacy and perhaps it happens a little more quickly because, hey, you got to. But uh, it's a wonderful thing, you know, and these are loving and kind people, this, this group, and uh, we knew we were safe. Good thing is we've been doing it a while, so we had our sea legs, because we've been in the theater a lot. That's, that teaches us about courage and endurance, and when it gets hard, we can do it. Just stay present. Uh, so then we all went away for three weeks to where we all lived and whatever we were doing. And when we came to shoot in Idaho, we had done our homework, you see. Uh, we had time alone. Uh, to me, time alone was crucial to the working on this script because you just, I think grief, you can't run from it. Try all you will. It's an uncomfortable thing to sit with. The reason actors can do it is because when we go home at the end of the day, we do not carry the consequences of the story. That's why we can do the deep dive. Because if it was about suffering, then the story becomes about the actor rather than us serving the character in the story, if you will. And that's something you learn and learn and learn. So uh, everyone was, it's one of those things, uh, I know we've all had it in our lives. You can tell that whatever's happening is a protected and kind of blessed experience where the help is coming from everywhere. Does that make any sense? Um, you can't put words to it exactly, but uh, the willingness of the characters, I'll speak for myself, because Jason would be all over me on this one. He's British, what can I say? <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, I love him to pieces. Uh, you know, just the generosity of Linda toward me, because those some of those areas, I don't know how to imagine that. I'm a mother of children. I, I, you know, you just, 
and she just was very present. And, I'll, and that's what was, it's true in pieces for every role, that's what the goal is, isn't it? That's when the joy begins, when you take your hands off the controls and you say, you know what? Okay, thank you. That this knocked me out. Uh, and she has stayed with me. And I'm very, very grateful to her because she just showed me a lot of things, taught me a lot of things. So. <laughs> no, that's. I, I know there's a mo more concrete way to say it, but I don't know what it is. I apologize. Well, there, it's actually hard to articulate things about this film, I think. I, it's so. I was saying to someone that I, I was surprised when I first saw the film during Sundance earlier this year that uh, that it hadn't originated as a play because it has some of the immediacy and closeness and rawness of theater that I'm not used to always seeing in a film. But I feel like Linda as a character in particular, that's true for because we come in potentially with a bias against this character that might need to be overcome. Did you did you have that experience? How did you kind of encounter her? Well, rule number one, golden rule, it should apply to life. No judgment. Because if you want to come to know a character, you treat it as a friendship, so to speak. I'll tell you about me, you tell me about you, we'll go slowly. The minute judgment, and you know how it is in a friendship, you're going to judge me, bye now. Don't need that, don't want it. So that's just something you get used to. So. I had no questions about her level of suffering whatsoever. Uh, can you imagine, well, not only does she lose her son, but the, the boy she raised and loves took the lives of many and changed forever the life of so many families. And that he took his own life. My boy, I did not know he was living in that level of despair. How you come to grips with those things, I just don't know as a parent. She's a very strong person, I think, very brave. And the fact that everything she knew before this, once it happened, everything shattered. I mean, I thought of her as the kind of peacekeeper in the family, if you will. The one you know who says to the child, honey, he doesn't mean to be unkind. He, 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 he just doesn't know another way to speak to you. I'm so, oh, sorry. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, the subway, isn't that lovely? We know exactly where we are, don't we? <laughs> Only New Yorkers could take that and keep going. Proud of you. Uh, and also to her son, you know, to the husband. Richard, don't speak. It's too harsh, hon. He, he can't hear that and not lose confidence. But once the unimaginable happens, none of those rules, they're over. Doesn't surprise me a bit the marriage didn't survive. You know, no more of that for her. She can't do it. Yeah, she's experienced a moment of like personal apocalypse and everything needs to change. And the freedom in that, if I can use that word, is you realize she had no anticipation or expectation of forgiveness. She does not want from anyone that. Because she's learned, no, no, that's not for me to want from these people. And she has no defenses. How is she going to defend? Can't do. There's a something in that where all walls are down. Um, anyway, it's a powerful experience. Um, you've spoken to other interviewers at times about growing up in a Catholic family, and certainly there's some kind of there's a double entendre in the title, right? There's, it's mass, it's a, a mass shooting, which is what we call it, but there's also some kind of an experience that they're going through. Um, and I was wondering if you thought about that, especially sort of being in this space, working through this film, the kind of journey that the characters go on. I think Fran was very intentional. He was raised as a, uh, in the Catholic faith as well. And to him, it made sense to have it in a church basement. Now, the, the cross on the wall, which is prominent, um, I think if he could have, he would have taken it down only because the faith, one's religious, you know, you could, it could be in a temple or a mosque or anywhere. Forgiveness has no boundaries. 
uh, but it was it was attached to the wall, and they they, they were not interested in taking it down. Uh, one understands, but the the spiritual content, the spiritual influence was intentional, and mass, the coming together of people. Uh, I don't know. You, you, that when you enter that space, the conversation about forgiveness and healing, they've had a couple of those. Do you know what I mean? That spirit is in the room. Uh, they have examined this and thought through it. So to me, and this was shown every single day of shooting, spirit was always present. However one thinks of spirit, all over it. It was beautiful. Uh, yeah, sorry. Her. No, there's just that, the beauty of bringing a gift and offering forgiveness and having a moment of <laughs> emotional and spiritual release is quite quite moving in the film. And, you know, I, I just watched it for the second time two days ago and felt the same thing I had felt the first time around for that reason, I think. Yeah, I, I just wanted to clarify for one second, not that I... But but I don't mean that Linda doesn't, I think she's, at the end of every sentence of hers is, I'm sorry. Do you know what I mean? I don't mean she comes in there in a state of peace by any means. Uh, and this haunting thought of, can I love my son? Because I love my son, I never know. And wanting to tell a story too, but not able to do it in the room. In the way, I'm proud of her for coming back, you know. Um, we have time for some questions from you all, and we have a microphone here. So if you raise your hand, I'll try to call on you. We'll start up you want here. mine, buddy? <laughs> yeah, we might as well start with the one we've got. Um, and then uh, we'll have a few minutes for that. Go ahead. The film was incredible. Um, I think you all deserve Oscars. Um, the, uh, the question I have is the bulk of the film is in that room around the table, more or less. Was that all done in one take? That's what it seemed like, and I couldn't believe it. It does have the feeling of a one-take film, but um, what, what was that shooting process like in the room? Thank you. Uh, we shot everything before and after the room in the first four days of shooting. In the remaining eight days of shooting, we shot in sequence everything that happens at the table. We began early in the morning, and when sundown hit, we stopped because we were light dependent. Thank heavens. I love that. Do you know what I mean? Well, you know, okay. And uh, we shot 10 to 12 pages a day. It was not all together. That's, really um, that's really not possible in a, a film, to my knowledge. Not that I, right. Uh, and plus, it flowed, you'd be amazed at the amount of laughter in between. I imagine it was a, some sort of release, but, uh, and we were, this is the thing too, we worked in similar ways, the cast, and because we'd done it a while, no one needed to be called by their character name, Not, no disrespect to anyone who wishes for that, but we could travel to laughter, weeping with laughter. Reed Bernie is absurdly funny. <laughs> And it comes from, you're just like, wait a minute, what did you say? Uh, and then we knew when it was time to drop back in. If some one of the characters had a heavier day than another, the natural giving of space and support was all a natural flow. Uh, and no one was in the room with us. Camera was, but we have none of us know where it was. We I forget. And Fran stayed out of the room. He wanted it to be a conversation amongst four people. And that's how it felt. That's how it felt. So, lucky us. Um, yeah. uh, we've got a mic. Oh. Oh, oh. Whatever you like. We'll come see you. I'm reminding myself of Jason. If Jason were here, he would take over. All right, who wants to write microphone? Any one up and down. Very annoying. Uh, thank you, Anne. Uh, thank you. As all the, for all the actors and for the beautiful script that was written. Yes, the script. Um, this is a very hard film to watch. I understand. And it's a very hard film to talk people into coming to see. 
And it's a very important film at this particular outside moment for people to see. So my question has to do with redemption. Yes. And, and forgiveness. Uh, these are not words we hear much of today. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to ask both of you, since you've seen the film twice, in the distance from Sundance to here, um, what's the takeaway for you personally about this film and why an audience should see it? I mean, as a movie critic, I've been telling people that um, that you, it's almost like it's documentary, but not, right? You're putting yourself in a room you otherwise would never be in. And um, personally, I think people ought to do that. I'm really delighted to see so many people here um, because yes, thank of that. You. Um, but from my perspective, I think it's really stretching and important for us to do that. I agree. I would say, what is your name, sir? Joe. I would say, Joe, that um, it's a film that at the end of the day is about healing. And healing is a beautiful thing. And what, 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 what I learned after doing it, and life teaches us this as we go along, as we, I'm fond of saying age is, un, is uh, underrated. Uh, getting sick of myself saying it. Now I'm wondering, <laughs> is that true? Uh, to answer your question, uh, there is always a way through. At the end of the day, we all carry the human heart. And if we can, just for a little while, put aside the sureness that we're right, put aside the blame, the guilt, the I want to hurt you, if we put it down, something miraculous happens. And I don't mean magic. I mean the walls go, and we suddenly can put ourselves in the shoes of another, and all of, the, all of that rage, anger, blame, you, falls away. So this film, to me, is uplifting, because it just told me it is always possible. Uh, you know, Fran, Fran, when he was in college, studied the Truth and Reconciliation Project, Desmond Tutu, and it worried him that he could not be one that forgave. It lurked. He was concerned. Uh, and so he, was, he kept that question going as he got older and when he had his first child and he Oh, he listened on the radio as he was driving to a, a mother who had lost a child in the Parkland shooting. He had to pull over. He was a new father, and he was overcome at what that grief could possibly be like. And then he focused entirely on reading everything he could read. And one of the last interviews we did here in New York, I think it was New York, forgive me, we did it, Fran and I, with a woman whose child, whose daughter died, was shot and killed at age six in a mass shooting. This woman had made her way through to the other side. She had found forgiveness. Her marriage did not survive. She said, you can't choose not to grieve. That is not a choice. You got to let the walls go. You know, it's scary to sit with this film at first, but if you take those breaths and say, it'll be all right, I'll be all right. Just let me sit with this. Uh, Fran and I wept, like we couldn't even speak because we were in the presence of not make-believe, but real life. And she was remarkable and beautiful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Joe. Um, we had one over here. Um, I got don't it. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. So it seems like in some of your more notable uh, roles that you seem like you're drawn towards um, stories of the destructiveness of grief and how we use faith to cope with it. So I was wondering if that's something that you've always been drawn towards. 
I also was curious if you had anything that happened of significance yesterday that was the 10 year anniversary of the sudden departure. <laughs> What's your name, hon? <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. That is so, so sweet. Uh, I have nothing to say. No. Um, honey, I, I wonder what you mean when you say uh, destruction of grief. What other roles would you be speaking of? Um, I would say grief and the leftovers. Um, the leftovers? Yeah. don't know if you have. Yeah. Uh, what, sweetheart? Yeah. Uh, gosh, it's funny. The leftovers, do, do you know, do you guys? Sorry. Uh, that was a remarkable show. I mean to say, Lindelof. Whoa. And he's the loveliest man in the world. And Parada, Tom Parada. Things happen in the course of that. You know, Patty, Patty, Hurt, hurt, hurt. You, you get, you know, the question for me was, who hurt you, hon? When did it happen? And for how long? I am at, well, we know her marriage was awful. But what released her from that grief in the well with Justin, Kevin, was the putting down of the burden of self-hatred. I could have left. I could have done it. I had the money. I got through Jeopardy enough times, and I did not do it. That burden gets put down, and life begins. Now she's going to leave the earth again. But just the notion of put the burdens down, whatever they look like or feel like. We know they're there, because when they're not, how about joy? How about that? And what that feels like is weightless. I think that's the point of life, honestly. Uh, I think she found that. Now, Lydia's got a ways to go. I'm talking about handmaids. I'm sorry, I don't want to assume anybody watches. Uh, and Linda had no choice, did she? Some, that, was choice, that choice was either you can... I can't imagine her getting off the floor for days and days and days and days. Somebody had to get her out of a bed. Somebody had to get food in her. Cause, and then she made a decision, one crawling step at a time, to accept what was now real in her life. We, I believe, are actually out of time. Should we do oh, one we can more? do one more. We can do one yeah, more. Yeah, I don't like yeah. when people's hands yes, go up. I'm I so sorry. Well, now we're suddenly, ask. yes. Um, I don't mean to impose. Uh, no. I, she's in charge. Is, no, she's in charge. <laughs> <laughs> um, can, we, can we go right here? Yeah. Hi, I thought you just gave a wonderful performance in this film. And I was curious, you, um, because of like the real time aspect of the film, was your preparation for both your character and your work with the other actors different than other projects in any way? Well, we, you know, eight days is what it took to shoot that. Um, by some that's considered incredibly fast, but I think the timing was perfect. Didn't give us time to overthink, overdo. Uh, and plus, we knew we, we knew the homework that had to be done to the degree that one can. Because at the end of the day, you let go of the controls and you say, I've done, I've sat with this script, I've sat in the silence, I've sat and just made myself sit and stay. Learning the words, learned our words, because the last thing you want to do is go up here for the word. What are the, and then you're out of the scene. Do you know what I'm saying? So prep is is always that, in the sense that be ready, be prepared for what you can be prepared for. That's just a basic work ethic. Um, and then every, you see that thing about spirit, that mysterious process, who knows? Like it happens in our lives, like wow, how did that work? Put words to it, you can't, but you know it was good, you know? Make sense? Thank you. <laughs>